Hi everybody and welcome to Sweatpants BI. It's me, Sean here, and I wanted to wish you all a happy new year. And I wanted to, de to dedicate my first video of 2024 uh, to sort of presenting some reflections that I've had over the past few weeks. I was lucky enough to take some time off from work as part of my family's relocation and because of the holidays here in the US, uh, Christmas and New Year's. And so I took, took some time to sort of reflect on my own business intelligence career, which is approaching uh, now 10 years uh, in 2024. And uh, wanted to, you know, this got me kind of thinking about what would I do if I were starting a BI job hunt in 2024? Is there anything that I might have done differently with regard to my own career? Uh, are there any things that exist today that didn't exist when uh, I was uh, starting my career a decade ago? Or are there some things that are just as relevant today as they were when I was first entering the business intelligence career path uh, back in 2014. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the first uh, thing that I think is absolutely essential to starting a BI job hunt, and that is knowing your tools. And the, the three big tools that I think are uh, just as relevant today as they were when I was getting started are Excel, SQL, and Power BI or Tableau. But you know, you know my bias, I'm gonna say Power BI. Obviously, Excel is a foundational skill to anyone who's working with data. And I'm not just talking about basic Excel skills. I'm not just talking about people being inter, uh, being beginners and able to do arithmetic, some columns, things like that. I'm talking about more complex skills uh, in Excel, uh, you know, very complex uh, string and text manipulation. I'm talking about all of the various lookups that are out there, XLOOKUP, VLOOKUP. But if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, you're like, what, what are lookups? You know, then that might be something for you to work on. But I, I mean, anyone who is entering into a business intelligence career or working with data, it needs to be among the strongest Excel uh, gurus, uh, I would say, in their organization or possibly within the entire company. SQL is also insanely useful and kind of a foundational skill for a lot of companies now. Uh, when I first started my career, it was kind of a uh, you know feather in the hat of a company, especially smaller companies that had data warehouses. But now almost everyone's got one and you have to know SQL so that you can source data and manipulate it easily. SQL is not terribly complex to learn. I think that anybody can master the fundamentals of SQL in just a few days. Call it a week, uh, depending on how much time you have. That's why SQL is such an important skill. And then of course, if you're interested in working in business intelligence, uh, presenting data and building reports and telling stories with the data is another fundamental skill that you know is gonna take you a lot of time and a lot of practice to master, but you need to have the basics sort of nailed down and understand you know, what a lot of these things are when you're starting your job hunt, which is why I recommend personally Power BI, but of course Tableau is also a great tool. It's just not one that I use nearly as regularly. So you need to have one of those data visualization and BI tools in your arsenal when starting your job hunt. Basically no exceptions in 2024. Next, I would say that it's definitely important to be uh, conversational and um, you know knowledgeable about the tools around you. This means that you don't just know everything about you know the tools that uh, directly impact business intelligence. You're also uh, very conversational and aware of the tools and the coding languages that are very important to the many sort of technical and data parties that touch business intelligence as a uh, as an industry. This means that you're conversational on topics like data warehousing and ETL. If you don't know what ETL is, please go ahead and look it up add that to your learning agenda. It's a very, very important concept. And even though I'm not a data engineer, I do my own ETL in different places all the time. You need to be at least aware of the basics and what the acronym stands for. I would also say master the fundamentals of uh, data modeling so that you can have conversations with data engineering or data engineers about like table structures and schemas and understanding what the best way is to sort of get data from one place to another for your BI reporting. Almost every team that I have ever worked on in my business intelligence career has had data scientists and increasing, increasingly uh, people that work uh, with ML and uh, natural language processing and AI. You definitely need to be, you know, conversational and understand the topics that are important to them. You know, what kind of work do data scientists do? What are important topics? What are ethical topics in AI? How does your company uh, use things like GPT uh, in, in, you know, 2024? 
be conversational on data governance topics and data security so that you understand, you know, uh, what about your data is maybe sensitive? Why do different people and different groups around your company have access to some data, but not others? And of course, you know, it never hurts to be uh, conversational on something that honestly kind of scared me a little bit when I was just starting down the business intelligence career path. And that is quantitative methods. Uh, there are all kinds of great books out there that can, you know, sort of break down more complex statistical and mathematical concepts. Uh, for uh, dummies like me that I will, uh, one of which I will even recommend later in this video, but that might help you out as well if you're someone who's, you know, a little bit nervous around numbers, but is uh, eager to learn more as they start down the BI career path. Number three, I would say find a BI adjacent area and lean in. And this is just my way of saying, don't go all in on business intelligence and don't become a jack of all trades or someone who is, you know, just, uh, who is just a little bit good at a whole bunch of things. I highly recommend that in addition to your business intelligence uh, skill set, where you're becoming, you know, a master of something like Power BI, a master of data visualization and data storytelling, Find one of those adjacent areas that I mentioned in the uh, last tip, something like data engineering, data, data science, data governance, and really double down on that specific area so that you're not just a BI person, you're a BI person and one of these other things. I guarantee that that will make you a, an, a first of all, it'll make you a more valuable uh, BI professional, but it will also give you a sort of backup option or something to fall back on uh, if your business intelligence uh, career, you know, gets kind of thrown off the rails. Uh, in my experience, working in the corporate world for almost a decade, people get moved around, priorities change. Sometimes you have to do a little bit more of this than that. And so, you know, you keep your options open. Absolutely have a broad education and broad knowledge of all the things and all the industries that touch BI, but it's okay to pick one BI adjacent thing that you find particularly interest, interesting and sort of, you know, use that as a, almost like your, your college or university minor. Uh, you know, if BI is your major, I would say pick something else and sort of make that your minor and, and really pay special attention to that one other area of focus. It'll just make you a more well-rounded employee. Next, learn how to visually communicate. This is a particular, uh, you know, sort of pet peeve for me. And that is uh, when I have people, and it's even more of a pet peeve if these people are already working in BI, who just think that business intelligence uh, is building dashboards, building reports, and just chucking bar charts and line charts and metrics onto a page and showing and then just you know presenting whatever they come up with to stakeholders. Instead, focus on mastering uh, the core data visualizations and the roles that they play in really presenting data effectively and then go beyond that in understanding things like color theory. You know, are uh, what do co different colors mean to different people? What do they mean across cultural boundaries? Which colors are more uh, problematic for maybe people who perceive color differently? And uh, which colors, you know, are uh, really sort of by their very nature more likely to sort of attract the user? And how can you sort of game that to make use to make someone who is looking at your report? see the specific points within the data or the insights that you're presenting, sort of see those and focus on them more easily. And then of course, there's also techniques like visual encoding and gestalt uh, visualization techniques, which just kind of help you, um, you know, mobilize uh, things like spacing in your report and alignment and adding borders around things to sort of help users understand that like two numbers or two charts that you have in your report are connected and that they're supposed to sort of visually compare these two things specifically as opposed to other things that might be on your report page. These tend to be areas when I'm interviewing candidates that they're not as comfortable or competent talking about. So this is why I highly recommend that you, you know, uh, you know, do a little bit more research on these topics and check out excellent books uh, like uh, the one that I'm going to recommend here in just a minute. Uh, that is uh, uh, Storytelling with Data by Cole Nussbaumer Knopflik. It's a classic. It goes into some of these topics and very heavily on Gestalt visualization techniques. And uh, I highly recommend that. We're going to talk about that more in just a moment. The next one is learn how to sell yourself. That means 
not leaving your career in the hands of something like GPT. This means refining and polishing your resume and really taking ownership of your portfolio through ruthless development and refinement. I cannot tell you how deflating it is for someone who is a hiring manager to see people who say that they're really, really excited about working in business intelligence and they're trying to land their first analytics career, but they're using, you know, uh, chat GPT uh, resumes, they're building, uh, they're letting things like chat GPT build their cover letters. They're, they're basically not telling me anything about themselves and they're just like trusting it, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, other technical resources and platforms that doesn't do anything for you. And it's also very, very poor practice for you because honestly, learning how to sell yourself and learning how to take the experience that you have and the things that you know and capitalize on that information and present it in a compelling package to an employer is not just a skill that you need early in your uh, career search. It's some, it's a skill that you're going to need throughout your uh, career search, not just to get your first BI role, but to get uh, you know, your first promotion to a senior or a lead or an associate director or a vice president of business intelligence. You are all always going to need to figure out for yourself what works for you when it comes to presenting your your accomplishments and your milestones in a manner that is going to you know compel a company or a, or a hiring manager or a group of interv interview panelists to take a chance on hiring you. And along a similar nature, the next thing that I want to say is learn how to forgive yourself and also how to forgive the hiring team because uh, as much as I would love to tell you that it's other that it's otherwise you cannot always control the outcome of your job search of your interviews of uh, which people look at your resume which people don't even look at your resume when you submit one how they interpret the content in your resume whether or not they think you're a good fit not a good fit underqualified overqualified you just don't have control over these things so it's important not to you know and i know i'm being a little bit cliche here it's important not to get discouraged and you know and you know give yourself uh grace forgive yourself you know for uh you know maybe not sticking the interview or you know sending out a resume that you thought was a slam dunk and then you you know immediately like within 24 hours get a rejection an automated rejection letter back uh one thing that i want to highlight is I've been starting to apply for, for some more business intelligence jo jobs lately. Uh, you know, even with my Sweatpants BI channel and all, my huge portfolio of, uh, of work in the Power BI space, I will still apply for Power BI jobs and not even get a sniff or immediately get rejected for jobs that I thought I, that I you know, literally checked every box for. It happens to me. It's going to happen to you. You cannot read too much into it. At the end of the day, you don't know what the hiring team is thinking or the specific kind of person that they're looking for. Maybe they already have someone in mind. And, you know, the fact that you applied and you were perfectly qualified is, you know, just a formality. You can't control these things. So forgive yourself. And like I said, it's also very, very important to also, uh, you know, forgive the hiring team. They're doing the best that they can to find the right candidate. Uh, sometimes they're going to get it right. Sometimes they're not. Doesn't make them bad people just because they, you know, didn't give you uh, what you consider to be a fair chance. You know, they're they're just humans. I want to emphasize that, you know, it's nothing to get angry about. Everyone's doing their best. At the end of the day, the only thing that you can control is the quality of your portfolio. Make sure that it is polished and refined and you can control your attitude to just take a deep breath and tomorrow, start from start from scratch, start fresh, keep applying to jobs and try to learn from the process. What about your resume is working? What's not working? What about your cover letter, you know, uh, uh, seem to be working or not working? And maybe which, you know, what things did you do uh, that helped you get that first call back for an interview? And how can you double down on the things that got you that interview to create future interviews? Things like that. Step seven, I would say is very important to me, and that is ignore social media. But I'm going to also uh, put a corollary on that of but. First thing you can do, use social media to your advantage. I mean, like LinkedIn uh, can be very frustrating and it can make you feel like you're, you're not succeeding, but it does have tons of useful content on it if you play it right. You know, the things that I'm talking about using to your uh, advantage are, you know, see what other people are posting, you know, as far as examples of their Power BI work. 
uh, and be honest with yourself. Is your work better than theirs? Is it worse than theirs? Uh, if your work is better than theirs, great. You at least know how you stack up against some of the competition. And if you see a whole bunch of different work out there that you feel like, man, my Power BI reports or my data visuals are nowhere near that good, then continue studying what they're doing. Follow them. See, see the rest of the work that they're publishing and try to learn from those people. You only learn from the best, right? So, you know, use those things on, on uh, social media and on LinkedIn and try not to get too hung up in people that are bragging about their latest accomplishments or uh, I'm excited to announce I see that about 50 times a day in my LinkedIn uh, scroll. And most of the times people are just excited to, to announce that they finished watching a YouTube video or that they uh, finished their, uh, both halves of their sandwich during lunch. A lot of it's just, t you know, total filler and honestly just noise on LinkedIn. Always be happy, you know, for other people, for their accomplishments. Understand that everyone else out there is also, you know, just playing the game and struggling and trying to earn more money for themselves and their family and trying to find that next big opportunity. It can seem annoying. It can seem really noisy and you can feel like, you know, you're not doing enough. But at the end of the day, everyone's human. Do what's, do what's right for you. Let, the, let other people on LinkedIn do what's right for them and do what you can to learn. Uh, the last thing that I would say is also don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, this can mean reaching out to somebody like me asking, hey, Sean, can you uh, look at my resume and give me some feedback? People do that all the time. Uh, people reach out to me uh, telling me that, uh, Sean, I really like this tutorial that you did, but you didn't share the data set, which I often unfortunately forget to do. And so then I'll usually share, you know, multiple data sets with that person as an apology. Uh, and, you know, sometimes I have people that reach out to me just saying, hey, Sean, I'd like, I'd like to know more about your path to BI and how your career is going and what you like, what you don't like. And I'm always happy to share that information out. As usual, I will say that unfortunately, I get a lot of LinkedIn uh, communications every single day. I just don't have time to reply to all of them, but I do my best. And, uh, and you should also, as long as you're not trying to sell someone uh, something, or take advantage of them, you should also always feel comfortable reaching out to the experts uh, to ask for help. Most people I find will do what they can for you, even though it may not be offering you a job right there on the spot. And finally, the most important thing that I think you can do for your job hunt in 2024 or in any other year is read. As I said, Storytelling with Data by Cole Nussbaumer Knopflik is a very, very important book uh, and one that I love as far as, you know, honestly, I get jealous about this book because this is the book on data visualization and storytelling that I wish that I had written. It covers all the topics that I think are extremely important, explains them succinctly and explains them very well, honestly, probably better than I would do. Uh, you know, I've had other people uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn asking me, hey, Sean, would you be interested in writing a book on data storytelling or on data visualization? And my answer is kind of, but I also don't know if I need to because this book checks so many boxes uh, super well. Uh, why, should, why should I write a book that would honestly just retread a lot of the topics in this book? If you're uh, new to data visualization and you're just trying to understand what all the different, you know, core types of data visuals are and what are some more unique Data visuals that you can use for different situations. Better data visualizations by Jonathan Schwabish. Uh, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that right, is also an excellent book that I think will introduce you to a ton of charts that are probably uh, not going to be immediately familiar to you, some really creative ways of visualizing data that are just going to sort of ex extend your worldview outside of just the uh, core data visuals that are provided in Power BI Desktop. If you want to think beyond, um, you know, bar charts, line charts, cards, and uh, do donut charts, this is definitely a book for you. Another uh, great book that I'll be honest, I have not read just yet, that has uh, been highly recommended to me, that I have on the bookcase behind me and I will read uh, probably next week, is, is just called Data Visualization by Andy Kirk. It's a big one. As I mentioned earlier, if you're somebody that is afraid of uh, you know, more quantitative methods uh, and you know, really just wants kind of a crash course in statistics, I always recommend Naked Statistics to anyone who's interested by Charles Whelan. It's a quick, you know, kind of breezy read that, that brings brings tons of really great examples of statistical concepts while also, you know, presenting them in a manner that's fun and easy to read and very engaging. I need, I'm honestly way overdue to read Naked Statistics again. I'll probably give that another look before the end of the year, but if you've never heard of it, never checked it out, it's a book I uh, am thrilled to tell you about. 
And then uh, finally is another, I would say, sort of seminal book, you know, for anyone who is interested in uh, designing dashboards and uh, presenting information, and that is Information da Dashboard Design by Stephen Few, which I also have on the bookcase uh, behind me. And it is a tome, honestly, uh, between my uh, big Acura box set behind me and some of my Stephen Few books. I'm kind of surprised that this bookcase behind me is still standing. Hopefully that that uh, holds as long as uh, Stephen Few doesn't continue putting out more great books. But anyway, if you're not reading, that's one thing that you are messing up for your uh, business intelligence career. As I, as I said earlier, you wanna make sure that you are learning from the best and these books represent the best. If you're trying to nail down the fundamentals and really understand what business intelligence and uh, data visualization is, I highly recommend all five of these. Naked Statistics maybe doesn't fall in as neatly to a BI career path, but just understanding stats and understanding numbers and sort of how they impact the real world is invaluable to anyone who's going down this career path. So anyway, I hope that you found all of that extremely useful. This is, again, just my Happy New Year video for 2024. I just wanted to reflect on some of the things that I think matter most for, for people that are considering BI career path paths and sort of talk about, you know, what are the things that you really need to know and think about and learn going in? I'm pretty confident that if you have mastered these eight topics or if you're sitting down and sort of, you know, thinking about them more, uh, you know, more concretely, that you're, you're going to do just fine. I want to emphasize that a, I cannot imagine starting a BI job hunt in 2024. I know that the market is insane. I see all kinds of uh, times, you know, people posting messages about how frustrated and distraught they are with how long the process is coming, how many resumes they've sent out, how many jobs they've applied for, uh, you know, and how they just want to work and they just want a chance to prove themselves. And it is not easy. It is frustrating. It is deflating. I remember how agonizing it was for me after I completed my MBA trying to find my first job. So my heart goes out to you. Again, this might sound cliche, but just know that, you know, it it does get better. Eventually you will sort of find, you know, the, the role that is right for you. And once you get that first year or two of experience under your belt, then everything becomes much easier. But of course it can be very, very difficult to find that first role. So I just want you to know, I'm thinking about you, uh, you know, you have, you have my sympathy. But you also, you know, I'm, I'm sharing with you what strength I have that I gained from my initial job hunt way back in 2014. I hope that that helps you. I wish you all the, the luck that I can muster in 2024, that by the end of this year, you will have landed that BI role. Thanks for, uh, you know, checking out this video. And of course, as always, if you feel inclined to do so, like or subscribe to Sweatpants BI. I've got a lot more content coming in the next couple of months, most of which has already been recorded. So excited to share that stuff with you. Thank you, and I will see you next time on Sweatpants BI.